What's up guys, I'm One Turn Master One and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes and this is gonna be my pay to win one turn guide for Asher's Mythical Hero Battle. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, but in all seriousness, what's up guys, Fezzin here, welcome to the top 5 underrated obscure skills you didn't know you needed for legendary and mythic hero battles. Quick disclaimer, this short video is for free dancer one attack and strategies. If you're using something else, good for you. If it works, it works. But don't click off the video yet because some of these skills might actually help you with your own strategies too. And you know, you might just learn something new. But without further ado, let's begin. Number 5 on the list is Savage Blow. What it does is, well, if unit initiates combat, deal 7 damage to your foes within 2 spaces of target after combat. Or in baby terms, ha AOE chip damage go brr. And with that, you can actually use it to chip down enemy forces, HPs and stuff. And there's a lot of S's in that because it's multiple targets. A lot of targets actually. And by chipping them down to a really low HP, you can guarantee kills. It's also really cheap. It's on Camilla's and Bantu's. Another thing is you get to stack it. You put on your seal and your C slot at the same time. And that's 14 damage, chip damage to everyone around the target and stuff like that. Over time, you'll see that, oh, it actually guarantees you a lot more kills. And at the end of the day, this is what matters in these sort of maps. And that's why you should use Savage Blow. Number 4 on the list, we have opening skills. We'll be focusing on attack opening because that's usually what you need in these uh, maps. You just need more attack, more oomph. And to illustrate my point, I made this little chart to compare the other alternative skills that you could use. Firstly, tactic skills actually hinder the um, how you can make a team comp and stuff because of how, you know, tactic skills only work when the number of, of that allies movement type on the team is less than 2 or something like that. Another issue is the limited range when it comes to the other skills. Pawns, waves, and tactic have like varying from around 2 spaces or 1 space. While opening skills works at unlimited range, works on any turn, doesn't care about a team comp, and doesn't buff another target because in reality you don't need your dancer to get plus six attack because the dancer is going to be dancing the attacker, you know? Which makes opening skills a superior choice in these sort of situations. Third skill on the list is Spurs. We'll focus on the attack again because we need more oomph for these kind of maps. I know you might think I am clown for saying spur attack is better than drive attack, but that's not what I'm trying to say here. I'm just saying they're they can actually work together and here's an example. I'm using my video against Freya and Chiandra again because this is when I started like making or forming a style of how I clear maps and stuff. As you can see here we have Peony as the spur attack bot. You see she has like double spur attack. And Nefni as the drive attack bot. She has double drive attack. Uh, here's where I just stack them both to one shot Chiandra. In other parts of the video you can see me just moving Peony and Nefni strategically around to see Oh, if Anna needed a spur or the drive or both, and this is what I meant by them working together. But yeah, that's why um, spur attack is actually worth running. The next skill on the list is chills. It essentially is like the opposite of openings. What it does is it targets the foe with the highest of blank stat on the enemy team, and then it gives them a debuff of seven on that stat. So let's say you're running chill defense, it'll inflict defense minus seven on the enemy team's highest defense unit. There's not much to say about it, again, it's just securing your kills. One special thing about it though is that that penalty will carry over to another unit when you end your turn, which again helps you get more kills. The last and final skill is Sorcery Blade. I don't get why this skill is so underrated, it's actually stupidly good. Look at these two screenshots right here. This is before Sorcery Blade and after Sorcery Blade. Look, look at how much Ana is doing and how much better Ana is doing with Sorcery Blade. It's not even just for Armor Knight situations too, you get to pick up defenses for everyone as long as you are next to uh, on a mage right you might say that's really hard to do but with your with the free dancers one attack strategy a lot of your dance is going to be tomina because you know you have peony and young azura and renea these are free to play options and you get to wings of mercy around just teleporting around to the attacker to attack instead of that you can essentially use social blade like almost all the time just trust me, slap onto your attacker and bring your free dancers and, you know, test it on one of the most stupidest Fire Emblem hero map ever made. A legit map of double save ball. But enough ranting, I guess this is the end of this video. I'm trying something new here, so it'd be really great if you guys can show some support and let me know in the comments if you guys actually like these kind of videos. I guess I should say that YouTube briefing, remember to like and subscribe because we are currently trying to get to 3,000 subscribers before my Anna cosplay comes in, so I have an excuse to wear it. But thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.